morning students i hope you have read the summary of the chapter and planned the first 3 pages of chapter 8 the singing lesson as given in the homework in the previous video and by the end of this video you will be able to explain the meanings of the difficult words according to the text tell about figures of speech that you will read in the text explain the text in your own words so open your textbook of echoes at page number 91 let us first of all know about the setting of the story the story is set in girls school on a fine autumn morning the protagonist is a music teacher at first the protagonist miss meadows is seen walking down the cold corridors of school to reach the music hall The major part of the story is set in the music hall where the singing lesson takes place. The music hall becomes a space for revealing her innermost troubles and worries. It is here that the choice of a sad and a happy song at two different moments reflect her mood and feelings. The little of it takes place in the headmistress Miss Wyatt's room also. Bir Miss Meadows get to read the telegram sent by Basil. Now let us do the word meanings of the first few lines of page number 91. The first word in the very first line of the chapter is despair. It means hopelessness. The next is buried which means hidden. Wicked means evil. Now the first line of the chapter is with despair cold sharp despair buried deep in her heart like a wicked knife so there is a simile here the despair of miss meadows is compared to a wicked knife and the simile reminds us of death now the next word is baton baton is a thin stick used by conductor to direct an orchestra or choir the baton that miss meadows carries is a symbol of her authority and control like in the hall she used the baton to give sharp taps demanding her girls to maintain silence the word trod means to walk rosy from the air means lively and happy and bubbling means feeling lively gleeful means joyful hurried means rushed fluttered means moved with quick light movements hollow means empty drumming means actions of playing drums tremendous means loud a voice like bird cried muriel it's a simile here the voice of a girl is compared to that of a bird here voice of a girl child is compared to that of a bird and muriel here is name of some girl now the next meaning is dumbbells dumbbells as you all know is a short bar used to exercise and now there is a figure of speech alliteration so first of all what do you mean by alliteration It is a close repetition of consonant sounds usually at the beginning of the words. So the line is someone had dropped her dumbbells. So this repetition of d and d is alliteration. Now let us read the text with despair, cold sharp despair, buried deep in her heart like a wicked knife. Miss Meadows in cap and gown and carrying a little baton trod the cold corridors that led to the music hall Now first of all what do you mean by despair it means hopelessness I have already discussed here is a simile despair is compared to a wicked knife and this simile reminds us of death So what are clothes of Miss Meadows? What is she wearing? She is wearing a cap and a gown. She is a teacher. She is carrying a little baton. You all must have seen the music instructors 
carry a baton as you a uh, type of stick with which they give instructions if the note has to go high or low trot means walk the cold corridors cold the word cold has great meaning here it means it symbolizes something rude the corridors of the school were feeling less for her they were rude to her why they are rude because she is upset now see the mood of the story with despair cold sharp despair so what does this tell this clearly tells us the beginning of the story is hopeless like it brings forth the scene of hopelessness right it tells you that further you are going to read something that would be very sad something hopeless now let us come to the text girls of all ages rosy from the air and bubbling over with that gleeful excitement that comes from running to the school on a fine autumn morning so now we are talking about the girls see how sharp contrast is given first there is the teacher who has despair in her heart and then these girls who are rosy from the air bubbling over with happiness they are happily excited as they have come to school and outside also it's a fine autumn morning so the girls hurried skipped fluttered by from the hollow classrooms came a quick drumming of voices a bell rang so there is a noise in the school the children you must have noticed the same noise in your school also when the children come to school in the morning they have so many things to talk about with their friends with the teachers so they are all talking among themselves and then the bell rings and the children start settling down a voice like a bird cried muriel so this must be name of some girl right and somebody is calling her and then there came from the staircase a tremendous knock knock knocking someone had dropped her dumbbells right so somebody who might be coming down stairs dropped the dumbbells and obviously when the dumbbells are falling down from the stairs there is a loud knock knock knocking sound there and this is onomatopoeia now what is onomatopoeia it's a figure of speech in which the formation of a word is the form of sound associated with it i hope you have understood so knock knock knocking is onomatopoeia so this paragraph tells us about the setting of the story the entry of our protagonist miss meadows and the general environment of the school it also shows the contrast between the mood of miss meadows and her children the other children of the school now let us do the next meanings the word affected means not natural drawl means to speak slowly with vowel sounds that are longer than usual for example sometimes children wish teacher good morning ma'am so a double o that's an affected drawl it's not natural it should be good morning right but the children are prolonging the way they speak double o now knock knock knocking we have already done here so let us move to the next word meanings hugging the knife it's a metaphor for how she she means miss meadows was feeling at her heart she was walking as she was hugging the knife something sharp something hurting sarcasm is a literary device that is meant to mock with often ironic remarks with the purpose to amuse or hurt someone for example miss meadows hugging the knife stared in hatred at the science mistress so here there is a sarcasm in this line the sweetness of science mistress is ironic and not real remember children we have done a theme also in which you had read that the way the teachers talk to each other 
with sweetness was only a show otherwise there were professional rivalries among the teachers right so even this sweetness with which the science teacher talks to our protagonist miss meadows is ironic it is not real now the next word is tangles which means mesh yellow hair means hair of the science mistress grimly means roughly shugri means over sweet frozen means lost somewhere mocking means making fun grimace means ugly face expression now let us read the text the science mistress stopped miss meadows good morning she cried in her sweet affected drawl i told you the way we prolong the spe- while speaking the pronunciation of o and o this affected drawl means this is the fake accent it is not the real way of speaking isn't it cold it might be winter so this means you have already read that it was a fine autumn morning so the winter obviously is at hand right soon it will be winter also so next is so it is little cold and she is saying that it might be winter soon miss meadows hugging the knife stared in hatred at the science mistress she didn't like the way she was called by her she doesn't like the science mistress at all everything about her her hair means the science mistress was sweet pale like honey you would not have been surprised to see a bee caught in the tangles of that yellow hair tangles means mesh so this para shows the beauty of the science mistress she is so sweet and pale like honey that one shouldn't wonder or be surprised how a bee is caught up in the yellow mesh of her hair because everything about her is so sweet so probably the hair too are sweet that they are attracting bees towards them now how miss miss meadows reply back it is rather sharp said miss meadows grimly the other smiled her sugary smile so everything about her is sweet everything about science mistress is sweet even her smile is sugary you look frozen said she her blue eyes open wide and there came a mocking light in them had she noticed anything so what do you mean by frozen frozen means lost somewhere so science mistress tells miss meadows that she seems lost somewhere right and in her eyes she had this mocking light mocking light means as if she was making fun of miss meadows had she noticed anything these are thoughts of miss meadows she is worried if science mistress had noticed that she was sad and dejected she didn't want to show this in front of her she didn't want to express herself otherwise she would be making fun of her oh not quite as bad as that so miss meadows replies that no there is nothing like that i'm not frozen and she gave the science mistress in exchange of her smile a quick grimace and passed on so i've already told you she wanted to ignore her she did not want to open her heart to her there is no love there is no friendship in them there are professional rivalries among the faculty of the school so this conversation the words like sugary smile mocking light quick grimace again hints at the professional rivalry in the faculty Now let us do the word meanings forms means this shows that it is an american school like in our school we say classes right in american schools they call forms forms 4 5 6 means classes 4 5 6 form means class deafening means very loud accompaniment means music played to support a person who is singing or playing a piano 
The next word is thrust. Thrust means pushed. Strode means walked. Ale means a raised platform. Mounted means climbed. Seized means held. So now the text. Forms 4, 5 and 6 were assembled in the music hall. So the classes, the girls of the classes 4th, 5th and 6th had assembled, had gathered in the music hall. The noise was deafening. So what is the noise? You must have seen in your classes also. Before the teacher comes, like when one teacher leaves and the other has to come, the time that you get in between the uh, two classes, you use them to Take out your heart to express yourself to your friends. You talk a lot and then there is a noise in the class, right? So there is noise in the class of Miss Meadows as well before she enters it. On the platform by the piano, by the side of the piano, stood Mary Beasley, Miss Meadows' favorite. So Mary Beasley is the favorite student of our protagonist, Miss Meadows. Who played accompaniments? So obviously this shows that whenever Miss Meadows came to take her class, she used to give instructions. It was Mary Beasley who sat at the piano. She was turning the music stool. So she is setting everything. The teacher has to come and she is setting everything. The stool should be in order. Everything should be on place. When she saw Miss Meadows, she gave a loud warning. Shh, girls. So obviously in our school also we have prefects. So when a teacher is about to enter, the prefect would say, Now all of you be quiet, ma'am is about to come. She has come. And Miss Meadows, her hands thrust in her sleeves, the button under her arm, strode down the center aisle. This is a passage. Strode down means walked down. Mounted the steps. Mounted means climbed. Turned sharply. Seized the brass music stand. Seized means she held it. Planted it in front of her. She picked it up from somewhere and planted. Put it down in front of her and gave two sharp notes with her baton for silence. Now the word meanings of the next lines. Glance means a hurried look. Flannel is a soft cloth made of wool or cotton. Bobbing means Quick, short movement up and down. Quivering means shaking. The next word is in a wax, which means upset. Tossed means moved. Defy means denying. Bleeding to death means suffering to heart. Pierced to the heart means hurt deep inside the heart. Now the next is, start reading. Silence, please, immediately. And looking at nobody, her glance swept over the sea of the colored flannel blouses. Sea of the colored flannel blouses. What does this mean? And there are so many children, right? It seemed to be like sea, right? The flannel blouses, the clothes that the children are wearing. She could only look at those flannel Blouses and she did not look at the particular faces of the girls. With bobbing pink faces and hands. So here we are talking about the girls. They had pink faces and hands quivering butterfly hair bows. Their hands were quivering. They were shaking and then they were wearing butterfly hair bows, hair bands and music books. Music books outspread. They were lying open in front of them. She knew perfectly well what they were thinking. And now, the girls might not be thinking anything. They must be happy that they have come to attend a music class. But because Miss Meadows is sad, she is thinking that Meedy is in a fax. So the girls might be thinking that the teacher, they must have given this short name to her, Meedy, Miss Meadows, Meedy, is in a fax. She is upset today. Well, let them think it. Her eyelids quivered. She tossed her hand, defined them. So these are the actions through which she is saying, it's okay, let them think whatever they want to. I'm not bothered about it. What could the thoughts of those creatures matter to someone who stood there bleeding to death? 
pierced to the heart by such a letter. Now what does this show? This shows that Miss Meadows broken self, right? She is so broken from within that she's, it seems that she is bleeding to death. Her heart is bleeding within. She is pierced to the heart. Her heart is badly broken by a letter. So now here you understand the reason of Miss Meadows' sadness. It's a letter that had hurt her so much that she felt like bleeding inside her heart. And that was why she didn't care about what the girls might be thinking, right? About her, she defies them. This shows the letter has come from someone very important. Now, the next meanings. Disgust means feeling of strong disapproval. Regret means remorse. Stalked means moved slowly. Motioned means moved. Chrysanthemum is a brightly colored flower. Chrysanthemum flower is regarded as a symbol of optimism and joy. It is also seen as the symbol of the sun. Hence, when Miss Meadows filled with coldness and despair walks down to the music class, she cannot appreciate it, thus ignores it. Next is ritual, means something that happens every day. A term and a half. Children, a school has two terms of six months each. So here, a term and a half means nine months. Tucking means to put it in a particular place. Voice of ice means cold, rude reaction. Accents means emphasis on particular notes. Now let us read what this letter was. The letter that had hurt Miss Meadows a lot. I feel I mean someone, a loved one of Miss Meadows. That is why she is affected so much by the words. I feel more and more strongly that our marriage would be a mistake. Our marriage means marriage of Miss Meadows with someone. So, okay, we have understood that the letter is from her fiancé. Not that I do not love you. I love you as much as it is possible for me to love any woman. But, truth to tell, I have come to the conclusion that I am not a marrying man. And the idea of settling down fills me with nothing but the word disgust was scratched out lightly and regret written over the top. I had discussed this earlier also in the summary. right? When you want to cut something or you want to replace a word, you cut it properly that the other person doesn't notice it. But here he had simply put a line on disgust and written regret instead. So the word disgust was clearly visible to Meadows and she was sad that he has used such a word for such a pious relationship of a husband and wife. He felt disgust in their relationship. So these lines of the letter gave her the worst injury. Basil, Miss Meadows stalked over to the piano and Mary Beasley, who was waiting for this moment, bent forward. Her curls fell over her cheeks while she breathed, Good morning, Miss Meadows. And she motioned towards her and handed to her mistress, mistress means teacher, a beautiful yellow chrysanthemum. So this is the flower she gave to her teacher. And this word Basil means this is the name of the fiancé of Miss Meadows. This little ritual of the flower had gone through for ages and ages quite a term and half. Means this was going from quite beginning of that term. Right? A term means from past nine months, Mary Beasley every day used to wish her teacher and give her that yellow chrysanthemum. It was as much part of the lesson as opening the piano. So giving the flower to the teacher was as much a part of the lesson as the piano was, as playing the piano was. Right? Now the next is, but this morning, instead of taking it up, 
instead of tucking it into her belt, while she leant over Mary and said, Thank you, Mary. How very nice. Turn to page 32. What was Mary's horror when Miss Meadows totally ignored the chrysanthemum, made no reply to her greeting, but said in a voice of eyes. Voice of eyes means lacking emotions. Page 14, please, and mark the accents well. So obviously, the little Mary felt insulted. Right? In front of three classes, she offered a flower to the teacher and the teacher completely ignored it. Nor did she wish her back. Now, the word meanings of the next lines. Staggering means deeply shocking. Blushed means to become pink or red. Chimed means sang together. Mournful is sad. Opening chord means the first note of the music. Now, next is staggering movement. Right? So, this is a very insulting movement for... Mary Beasley. Mary blushed until the tears stood in her eyes. So her face had turned red. But Miss Meadows was gone. Back to the music stand. Her voice rang through the music hall. She's so loud. The teacher is so loud. Her voice is ringing in the music hall. Page 14. We will begin with the page 14. A layman. Children, this lament, lament or otherwise also means a cry, right? Groan. So the song, the choice of song itself shows that Miss Meadows was crying within. She was sad, right? The choice of song marks the mood of the teacher. Now, girls, you ought to know it by this time. Means you must have learned it by this time. I've given you this many a times. We shall take it all together, not in parts. So now today we are not going to sing it in different paragraphs. Right? We will take the full song together. And without expression. So first of all, we are going to sing this song without expression. Sing it, though quite simply, beating time with the left hand. So now children, those who are interested in music, you must have seen when you start singing something, first of all, sometimes you give clicks with your fingers or... In the beginning of the song, you tap your hand once or twice, like you clap, and then you start the song, right? So this, so this beating time with the left hand means, now we are going to start the chapter, the layman, the song, right? So give a tap with your left hand. She raised the baton, she tapped the music stand twice, down came Mary on the opening chord, down came all those left hands, beating the air and in chimed those young mournful voices. Why are the voices mournful? Because the song that they are going to sing is itself mournful. It's a sad song. A lament is a sad song. And so the voices of the girls are full of sadness. Now what are the words? What, are, what is the wording? Let us read it. Fast, ah, too fast fade the roses of pleasure. The pleasure, the roses of pleasure are fading away, coming to end. Soon autumn yields unto winter drear. Right? So the autumn is also coming an end and the winter is going to begin. Fleetly, ah, fleetly, music's gay measure passes away from the listening ear. Fleetly music's gay measure passes away from the listening ear. Now remember children, winter is welcome and loved in India, right? Because we are a hot country. But remember, in many of the foreign countries in the western world, winter is taken as something very harsh. They peep. The people do not like winter. It is something very rude for them. They love summers which we take as harsh. Right. So the autumn morning, the nice autumn morning was turning into winter drear. Right. So this means something sad was going to happen. The happiness was turning into sadness. 
Now the word meanings of the next few lines. Tragic means something that upsets. Lament is expression of grief. Sob means uh, cry noisily. Groan is crying with pain. Awful is something very bad. Possessed means completely controlled by a spirit. Fumed oak means oak with withered appearance by exposure to fumes. Nutty means stylish or elegant. So now let us read. Good heavens, what could be more tragic than that lament? Every note was a sigh, a sob, a groan of awful mournfulness. So the lament was full of crying expressions. Miss Meadows lifted her arms in the wide gown and began conducting with both hands. Now, she tosses back to the letter the words of the letter. I feel more and more strongly that our marriage would be a mistake. Remember children, these lines gave her the worst injury. So we understand that the letter is from the man she was going to get married to, who now thinks he is not a marrying man and their marriage, such a pious relationship, would only be a mistake. She beat and the voices cried fleetly. Her voices refers to the sounds of the girls. Ah, fleetly. What could have possessed him to write such a letter? So was he possessed by some evil spirit? Had some evil spirit entered into him when he wrote such words, such hurting words? How could he be so rude to her? What could have led up to it? It came out of nothing. His last letter had been all about a fumed oak bookcase he had bought for our books and a nutty little hall stand he had seen. A very neat affair with a carved owl on a bracket holding three hat brushes in its claws. So these are two pieces of furniture. That Basil had bought and in the previous letter he mentioned that he had bought these two pieces of furniture for our books. Right? And for their house. Means he was ready for marriage. So what has happened now? So earlier he was writing about the things he was buying for their house and suddenly like a bolt out of blue he wrote that he was not a marrying man and that the marriage would be a mistake. How she had smiled at that. How happy was she when she had read about all that. So like a man to think one needed three hat brushes. So he was being so caring for Miss Meadows earlier. But suddenly the care disappeared. From the listening ear sang the voices. And the girls behind they are continuously singing. Right. So this is one of the sentence of the music on earth of the song only i hope you have understood what we have read in these three pages of your book of the chapter eight the singing lesson so now let us read the gist just as what all we have read in these three pages in these paragraphs we have read about the mental state of miss meadows and the way she was dressed up in a cap and a gown the girls of the school who looked cheerful and the way in which science mistress greeted Miss Meadows with her sweet affected drawl, her mocking remarks and expression of Miss Meadows clearly depicting that the two were not at good terms with each other. Inside the hall, she told everyone to be quiet and to open page 14 to sing the song The Layman. She ignored the chrysanthemum offered by Mary Beasley and gave grave instructions to her students about how to sing the song. All the time her mind was preoccupied with the words of Basil's letter and the choice of the song and the instructions were a mirror to her broken self. Okay students, now I fondly hope that you have understood the text of the first three pages of the chapter and now Reread them along with the explanation. Watch the video again and again for better understanding. And as a homework, you have to plan the rest of the pages 
of the chapter. Chapter number 8, The Singing Lesson. Thank you.